for a very kind introduction. Um, so today I'm going to talk about the first um, medical treaties from uh, Latin America or the American continents. Uh, <coughs> author is Francisco Bravo. Uh, his birth and death years are uh, still un unknown, but uh, he was born somewhere 1525 to 1535 and died around 1599. So let me stop. Francisco Bravo was born in Seville, Spain, though no accurate years of his birth has not been determined between, but still it's between 1525 and 1535. It is suggested that he studied in Seville, Osuna, and Alcala um, before finally obtaining a doctorate degree in medicine from Universidad de Os Osuna. After practicing medicine in Spain, <coughs> he traveled to, uh, he traveled to Mexico a few years before 1570. He probably died around 1599. Much uh, biographic information of Francisco Bravo is still unknown, unclear due to the scar scarcity of related documents. What is known for sure is that Bravo wrote in Latin Opera Medicinalia, medical work, which was published by Pedro Ocharte in currently known Mexico City in 1570. This publication is regarded as the first medical treaty printed and published in Latin America. According to Rodrigo Martinez Barax, there have been two attempts to partially translate uh, Opera Medicinalia into Spanish. Nevertheless, it has not been completely translated in, into Spanish. Although there, are, uh, there were other works written by Spaniards regarding the indigenous people's diseases, particularly uh, Pedro Arias de Benavides' uh, Secretos de uh, Chirurgia, Chirurgia, Secret of Surgery. Okay, so all these uh, colonial books have really long, long title uh, in the cover, but I'm not going to uh, read the whole four lines of this title for you. Um, so it, it was, that book was published in 1567, and it is an uh, instrumental tech, uh, book <coughs> to understand the indigenous people's medical practices. Um, however, Babo's work is still recognized as the first medical publication from American continents. Before delving into further analysis of this medical text, I would like to provide a brief historical context of Bravo's publication. Mexico was conquered by Spaniards in 1521. Approximately two decades later, in 1539, the first printing press was introduced in Mexico City with the permission of the first viceroy, Antonio de Mendoza, and Bishop Juan de Sumarga. 31 years later, the first medical manual of uh, Hispanic America was published in Mexico. Regarding social and public uh, medical issues, different from what many Europeans imagined, the pre-Columbian America was not the pristine and perfect earthly paradise. Certainly there had been various types of diseases, but those were less contagious than the ones that had developed in Europe, Asia, and Africa. As Spaniards and other Europeans settled in the New World, and various diseases were introduced, smallpox, typhus, diphtheria, and bubonic plague, malaria, yellow fever, cholera, and influenza. The fatal evolution partially caused by the proximity of the old world peoples to their domesticated animals, particularly pigs, with which they share the microscopic organism. Vigorous new diseases developed as viruses transferred back and forth between the species. In contrast, the indigenous people of North America or Mexico domesticate only one mammal, dogs, which rarely shared pathogens with humans. Just before or around the time of Opera Medicinalia publication in 1570, there were detrimental diseases affected severely on indigenous populations. In regard to the medical practice during the colonial time in Mexico, 
Although rampant uh, spreads of different diseases required a number of medical care and <laughs> assistance, there was only one medical school at the newly founded institute, uh, Royal University of Mexico, which was in its nascent state. It has known that in the time of the first Spanish conquistador, Hernán Cortés, there were already Spaniards practicing medicine as surgeon barbers, healers, or curers. Also, the Municipal uh, Council of Mexico City started enforcing austere medical regulations in 1527 and extended them to the uh, apothecaries, uh, pharmacists in 1529. Finally, in 1578, the first medical school, Facultad de Medicina de Royal University of Mexico, was founded. In this context, Francisco Bravo wrote his Opera Medicinalia. There are three existing copies of Opera Medicinalia, one in Public Library of New York, another one in uh, Zabalburo Library in Madrid, Spain, and the other in the library of Jose Maria La Fragua de Benemet Merita at the University Autónoma de Puebla, Mexico. About the textual organization, Opera Medicinalia is divided into four chapters. Since it was written in Latin, is highly specialized in, in medicine. Um, according to Somolinos Dardois, its readership must have been very limited which in turn explains its scarce circulation. The original title appearing in the cover of the book of Opera Medis uh, book is Opera Medicinalia in Quipus Quam Plurima Extans uh, Situ medic, uh, Medico Necesaria in Quator Libros Digesta, Quae Pagina Versa Continue, Autor, uh, Autore Francisco Bravo uh, Orsonesi, Doctore uh, mes, uh, mesica, Mexicano mm -hmm. Medico. So, medical work in which necessary medical knowledge is included in four books in the following pages. Author Francisco <coughs> Bravo, Doctor from University of Osuna, and Doctor of Medicine in Mexico. As the title suggests, there are four chapters books, uh, each of which is dedicated to one specific topic without any relation to the other three chapters. The first chapter focuses on sunstroke, tabardete, which is known today as an ep uh, epidemic typhus caused and transmitted by human body lice. This disease was quite widespread in uh, Mexico during Francisco Bravo's time. When Bravo arrived in New Mexico, current uh, uh, New Spain, I'm sorry, New Spain, current Mexico, it was estimated that there were three and a half million uh, inhabitants. Among them, there were thirty thousand Spaniards and almost the same number of blacks and mestizos. In capital, Mexico City was situated in the middle of uh, Tex Texcoco Lake. And its uh, canals connected the capital to its surrounding. According to Francisco Bravo, it is a perfectly vulnerable configuration for quick spreads of diseases. Bravo attributes water pollution to certain epidemics, and he refers to Hippoc uh, Hippocrates uh, on airs, waters, and places which serve uh, Bravo to review the geographic setting of Mexico City. At the same time, he mentions Gallen and other major authors of medical treatises, among them Avicenna, Alvradi, uh, Alvradi Meo, Aliapas, uh, Aetius of Amida, and Paul of Aegina, as well as Bravo's contemporaries such as Girolamo uh, Fra Castoro. Francisco Vages and Francisco Vagediola. In the 16th century, New Spain was affected by devastating epidemics which decimated a large portion of the population and Bravo's work addresses such medical crises, in particular the aboriginal population was vulnerable to the 
disease transmitted by Spanish, Spanish and other European conquistadores. Uh, and as one of the first Spanish medical doctors in Mexico, Bravo dedicated the first chapter to study epidemic typhus as the most imminent medical challenge in the new world. The second chapter of Op Opera Medicalia is a dialogue that deals with a vein that would be bled in the case of pl uh, pleurisy, also known as a pleurisitisis, which is inflammation of membranes uh, that surrounding the lungs and line the chest cav cavity. Its original chapter title is um, in Latin, so uh, just skip that. And in, in English translation, is of then a section of pleurisy, pleurisy <coughs> all other body inflammations. Bravo is addressing a touchy subject here because it causes a heated controversy among European medical doctors during the 16th century to determine the precise location where bloodletting should be performed in pleurisy. Pedro Larin and Fran uh, and Tralgo expounded that the essential problem of this controversy was founded in fact that in the fact that the Greek authors thought that in the case of unilateral pleurisum uh, pneumonia, the vein most approximate to the affected area should be cut. Whereas the Arabic treatise indicate that bloodletting should be done in the opposite side of the inflammation because it would cause a reversive or an, an emetic you know, bloodletting effect in blood, uh, the blood if bloodletting was done near the affected area. For this reason, the local reversion was avoided by doing bloodletting in the other arms or leg instead of the affected area. Bravo's dialogic presentation of controversy between the two traditions uh, resonated a debate in Europe in the first half of the 16th century. During this time, the majority of university professors of medicine were influenced by the Arabic medical tradition. Nevertheless, a French doctor, Pierre Brissot, based on his own experience, proposed a return to the Greek method which created the controversy. The root of this issue was a Renaissance problem, a struggle between Arabism inherited from medieval epoch and a return to Hellenic classics. In the debate bloodletting in the Pleurisy, Bravo favored the Greek authors. His explanations show in line with his contemporaries' uh, favoritism of Greek uh, medicine to begin with, this second book uh, was written in a dialogue narrative which was become popular because of er Erasmus. In Spain, a dialogue uh, as a literary genre was frequently used in the intellectual circle related to the Universidad de Henares, where Francisco Bravo probably studied for some time. One may remember Luis Vives dialogues, which was inspired by Erasmus writing and in, in turn, Cervantes Salazar, an intimate friend of Bra uh, Bravo, translates many of Erasmus' works into Spanish. Both Bravo and Cervantes Salazar may have studied together at the University of Alcalá de Henares. Yes, I'm running out of time. You have two minutes and a half. Two minutes, okay. <laughs> so you can wrap up if you want. All right. So, uh, basically, I'm just, uh, there are, what I summarize uh, uh, next three chapters, second and uh, uh, three and four chapters. But let me jump to the last part. Uh, the the fourth chapter of Opera Medicinale focused on the plant called Similax, which were, which has about two hundred species recognized by now. But in the time of Spanish colonization, only two were known. Uh, Barils of Europe, Similax aspera, or common Similax, and those of New World, <coughs> Similax medica. The European species was from Spain or Italy, and the Mexican species was from Veracruz and Tabasco. In this chapter, Francisco Bravo does his best to demonstrate the benefit of the new species found in Mexico, especially that in Europe, uh, uh, Similax is cold and dry, while the Mexican uh, one is hot and dry. In this way, Bravo suggests that the Mexican uh, Similax would be good for various medical applications. In conclusion, 
there will be still much to study about Bravo's Opera Medistalia, but with my preliminary analysis, I believe that situating himself in the middle of controversy of his time, a debate between the Greek uh, medical tradition, the Arabic practice, in Opera Medicinalia, um, Francisco Bravo intellectually tried to demonstrate the need to return to the Greek method. Meanwhile, he attempted to address the <coughs> academics in Mexico, exploring a, a few uh, new treatments, mainly using new plants found in Mexico. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.